Only mama showed up with this bag and said, kids, we gotta blow this joint. <laughs> mama didn't say that exactly. She said, now listen, because it's Vietnamese to English, so it sounds something like, Oh, filial first son from the sacred land in which our umbilical cords are buried. We must take leave due to communist cruelty. They put your honorable father in re-education camp. If we stay, they'll send us to new economic zone. We have to no choice but commit this forbidden sin. Please go bow to your ancestors, light incense, and beg for forgiveness before we leave. And first, fill your son, don't forget your toothbrush. <laughs> I was seven years old, I was like, what What I do now? I'm telling you, it's like Vietnamese mothers who make everything your goddamn own fault. Think about it, the commie's gonna fuck you up and then you're gonna be sent to the new economic zone so you have to escape out to this big bad ocean and somehow it's you who have to beg for forgiveness? And from dead people? Grandpa, grandma, ancestor of eight generations back to the Qing Dynasty, forgive us. We can't put us in the grave next to you. So okay, goodbye. We loaded this fishing boat and moved the Mekong Deltoys to Beverly Hills. Entire clan, that is, Vietnamese boat people. All climbing in this rickety fishing boat and when the next village saw us, half of them came along. Hell, it's 21 by 6 feet, so why the hell not? When Americans say maximum capacity 45, Vietnamese automatically add a zero to it. <laughs> you know how it is, tell us it's a boat and we'll find a way to fit. We live on top of each other, we sit on each other's lap, we shower together to save water, we sleep five to a bed, so there's no personal space, because hell, if there's space, there's a person taking it, all right? <laughs> Crowded to a Vietnamese is not a family living in a one room. That's just normal middle class. Um, hell, we didn't have home and garden back in Nam because back there we had shanty, thatch, and hut newsletter. Crowded on a boat is like it takes you from Saturday to Monday to get to the toilet and Wednesday to get back. Crowd is if you bend down looking for your plastic slippers, you lose your cherry. Crowded is when you have these hiccups and that fat lady a few people down from you get multiple orgasms. When my siblings and me, we all got to America and we saw these two white kids next door playing Twister, we thought, pshaw, you call that a game? <laughs> it's Twister, says Susie and her gayish brother Leon. Nah, it's live on the boat, my little brother said. Then all three of us show Leon and Bobby Sue right then and there how we played it. Do you know how you can tell Vietnamese boat children play Twister? We'd be like count, connecting red and green and yellow dots while helping each other do math homework, that's how. Hell, I less that. She nearly died from the experience because she was already dehydrated herself. But was she gonna hear no? Nah, -uh. she was never ever gonna let him die. That kid, right, he's grown up now, six feet tall and as handsome as Bruce Lee. But guess what? Scarred for life. Years of therapy ain't gonna change the fact that mama gave life to him not once, but twice. And she only died a second time and he remembered it. Hell, as if she ever let him forget. She bled him, she bled into him, so he better go to med school. <laughs> and that's that. He majored in psychiatry and brain surgery, and I think he was like his own first patient. I gave a couch to honorable son number two so he can lie on it and take notes and talk to himself. I mean, I'm not sure what Freud would say about it, but we can safely assume that big U-Haul permanently parked outside of his new home is for all of my bro's emotional baggage. <laughs> she owns him, man. Mama got him wrapped around her finger. No pun intended. He wanted to be a rock and roll band at 17, right? Because he's really good with them drums, but she wanted him to be a doctor, so he started to kick it back to her about American individualism and American dream and shit like that and mama just held up her finger <laughs> with that little scar 
And that just shut him up. <laughs> but she stopped saying shit like, oh, fill your numbers, two sun of blood that drops through your veins. Now she speaks her own version of Vietnamese English. So listen. I bleed for you. I keep you alive. <laughs> what for? So you can be heavy metal rocker? <laughs> no taxi trick boy for you, huh? You be MD instead. No drum, no rock and roll, huh? You love your mama, you study M a cat. My brother, he wanted to date Susie, right? And mama be wagging this finger in the air. Okay, you date. Mama, just kill herself and ask ancestor for forgiveness. First one, no good. Mama, no have nothing if you no good number two. But before mama go, mama want only one thing. Give back two gallon of mama's blood, okay? <laughs> My brother, man, he be breaking down, weeping like a baby. I'm sorry, Mama. I'll be a doctor. I'll, I'll be a brain surgeon. I'll, I'll forget Susie. My Mama, she gets away, away, you know, because you know why? Unlike driving in LA, I'm telling you, in my family, giving somebody the finger takes on a whole lot of different meaning. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I'm no good, dishonorable first son. I am the only one who got slapped by my mom, got to slap my Mama and get away with it. One night, right, she took her favorite cocktail, rum and Robin Tustin, and then she fainted right there on the kitchen floor. Everybody was acting like she, they were chickens without heads, and my sister Leanne, she was doing a pristy, ditzy, maids gone with the wind routine, like, Mama gonna die, Mama gonna die! So I slapped her first to shut her up, and then the pre-med boy, what'd he do? Uh-uh, he froze up. It was me, okay, the yellow sheep, the straight lamb, the screwed up among scholarship kids to become mama slapper. So I dropped and rolled and I straddled my mama right there on the kitchen floor and I slapped my mama. Wake up mama, wake up, slap, slap, slap. My siblings, they both stared, they were shocked. I looked over my shoulders and there was this awe in their eyes like you slapped the saint. The truth was, I was doing something that they all fantasized in their deep, dark, wet dreams, but never admitted it. I was bitch slapping the queen bitch slapper herself. <laughs> Mama not only believed in corporal punishment, she holds seminars on it in Little Saigon. Sort of like Confucianism and the joy of SNM 101. Mama show you Love with cane, huh? No, oh, not sugar cane. Bamboo cane. Mama used the rod on our tender asses. Mama slapped us on every other week for sassing and whatnot. Especially Leanne, who needed to be slapped like every five minutes to stop looking over the fence to make goo goo eyes at Leon. Well, I was slapping Mama and Leanne, she was like just downright envious. I could see her wanting to get in on it. Her hands was rising in the mid-air, mimicking my slapping like she was trying to give me pointers on how to do it. See, he took us on an all-newport in Corona Del Mar. We drank champagne and waved to all the skinny blonde people on their yachts who looked over at us kind of funny. Why? Maybe because Mama, she brought her rice cooker and she wore her conical hat and black pajamas and her Prada purse and she squatted right there on the deck and make us lunch. But so what? We ain't fresh off the boat, ain't FOBs no more. We got fabulous oriental booties. We're flamboyant oriental balladeers. We got fantastic autobiographies. It's like, look at us now, man. I mean, really, look. We're yacht people now. 